mine Settle in my favorite chair and I recline Now you may think it's asinine But it's all mine For nine at nine All right, in at number nine. Now that the big Platinum Jubilee celebration is over, we can finally answer the question, why does the queen always wear pearls? Her Majesty's pearls are part of a long-standing royal tradition. There has never been a queen who did not wear them. Queen Victoria gave each of her daughters and granddaughters a single pearl on their birthday. So by the time they turned 18, they had enough to fill out a string. Queen Elizabeth's father put his own spin on this tradition. Each year on her birthday, he presented her with a platinum chain and a pair of pearls, and she wears them every single day. On her wedding day, 1947, she wore two strings. Oh, nice. All right, number eight, he is 93 years old, and Popeye is getting a makeover. The long-running cartoon is being taken over by Randy Mulholland, our cartoonist from Texas. When the revamped Virgin premieres this weekend, Popeye will be a tail end Gen Xer, and olive oil will be a millennial. Oh. We'll also meet Olive's sister, uh -huh. Celinda Oil, who has not been used in the cartoon in nearly a century. Huh. At its peak, Popeye ran daily in hundreds of newspapers around the country. There you go. That'll That's going to really yeah. push the movement forward right there. Yeah. That's what Gen Z has been waiting on. Yeah. yeah. We'll put them in the newspapers. Those uh. kids will love this. Uh, number seven, no body shaming here, but we have a question about this Twitter ad. Is this man's uh, wrist too hairy? Oh, no. What difference does it make? Who cares? Robin, don't kill the messenger. I'm just posing the questions, such yes. as were there any less hair uh wrist models available? So what? Well, you think if you're a wrist model, you're, you're looking for a wrist model, you're not picking that guy. He's right, Robin. Why not? There's well, people with hairy arms. There's people with not hairy arms. Do you like hairy wrists? It's not a deal breaker. Who How cares? How many models you see with hairy chests and necks? Not many of those, that's do you? That's not a bother either. I mean, if that's, that's what the good Lord gave you, you, you roll with it, right? Well, Who not cares? everybody is as open-minded as you are, Robin, I which is a, a talent you have. I didn't know. When did it become well, bad? I mean, I thought most men had listen. hairy wrists, no? The Lord knew he couldn't make everybody a model. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we had to kind of mix it up a bit. Yeah. Hey, That's why we have ugly people, people Robin. <laughs> you know, the Lord doesn't give with both hands, as my mother likes to say. Yeah. You know, you, you have your gifts and you go yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. What was your gift? I don't know yet. I'm still working. I figure I'll figure it out. And maybe I... hairy wrists is a gift for this fella. Yeah. He's yeah. accomplishing lots of things yeah. with hairy right. wrists. They're right. But being odds. a wrist model should not be one of them. I don't well, see what the problem yeah. is. You never know. All right, number six. Uh, do you want to limit your teen's screen time? Researchers say that there's a sweet spot when it comes to screen time and mental well-being. Kids who are most well-adjusted spend one to two hours online weekdays and two to three hours on weekends. Anything more or anything less can be damaging. Read more about it in the journal Computers in Human Behavior. It's a great beach read. All right. I just want to say as a daughter of, uh, of mother of teenage daughters, never do you ever walk into a teen girl's bedroom and she's sitting there in her bed like this with her socks yeah. and her legs crossed. <laughs> listen, yeah. and no. How is it normally? It's like, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Number five, we're going to tell you how we came up with the names for the days of the week. It's Monday, the Babylonians are the ones who decided on a seven day week and they wanted Monday to be related to the moon. Oh. In the Nordic areas, the moon was called Mani. The Norse god named Mani pulls the moon across the sky. And dig loosely means dig. They got combined over time and you have Monday. Wow. wow. Great story there. Yeah. I'm hoping tomorrow we do Tuesday. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Don't <laughs> give it away. You get a two for one. It's only a five day work. All right. Yeah. Don't you know what a tease is? Maybe <laughs> we'll come in on Saturday and do Saturday. Now don't read ahead. All right, number four. Before city parks became common, Americans used to picnic and hang out for a good time in cemeteries. Have you heard this? I have all, heard this. All started around 1831 when cemeteries first started popping up. It's not that we didn't bury our dead before that. People used to just use small family plots 
or a churchyard, but a cemetery in Massachusetts started planting gardens and incorporating flowers. People realized they were nice places to hang out and they started calling them memorial parks. And as time went on, municipalities realized it was good to set aside public space for people to enjoy nature. And that's when parks came along. But you'd go and picnic near your, your recently sure. lost loved one's grave and it's like they were right there with you. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but on the south side, is it still common to go for walks through cemeteries? Because I have some south side friends who will post videos of them in cemetery. Like, you're going to see somebody? They're like, no, I'm just getting my laps. Oh, right. Because <laughs> it's a nicely manicured yeah. area you know and there's no park nearby. That is not something I've done. I know, like, you know, like Bachelors Grove Cemetery kids used to go because they thought it was haunted. But right. oddly enough, just yesterday, I was walking by a cemetery in Plainfield, and I saw some head headstones that were like from the 1800s. And I'm like, I tried to go in the gate because I wanted to walk in and see. Oh yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, I almost did that exact thing because I was out walking. Yeah. I'm like, beautiful well, day. Beautiful flowers. day. And it didn't it didn't strike me as odd until yeah. Mr. X said that's a little creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I didn't think it was, but maybe it is a South Side thing. Do other people do that? You're not interested? All I know of are two, and they seem very comfortable <laughs> with it. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, if you have a kid right now, you might hear hip baby names like Bowie or Peyton on the playground. But there are some baby names no one is choosing anymore, like Mo and Kermit. What? And according to the website, uh, Nameberry, here's a look at names that are at risk of becoming extinct. Uh, for the boys, oh. Clive, yeah, uh, Ricky, yeah, you right? don't meet too many Ricky. Frank, I've heard yeah. Frank, Clarence, yeah, oh yeah, or Gus, yeah. Gus. Probably saw Adolf on that I list know. also. <laughs> I know right. a dog named Gus, and the giant and the girls names at risk of extinction. Bertha, yeah, yeah. Janice, Janice is nice. Mildred. Beautiful. Donna, huh? No oh, one of Donna's? That's very early 70s, yeah. late 60s. Yeah, and Gail. Yeah, no nope. Myrtle? Bring the old names back. Agnes. Gladys. Yes. Yeah. You don't hear either. Yeah. Bernice. Yeah. Merle, Pearl. <laughs> yeah. All right, number two. Uh, summertime is lemonade time, and people have all sorts of ways of spicing up their lemonade, like adding a mint or maybe some watermelon. But how about this idea to add some spice, Dijon mustard? Oh. What? Yeah, I haven't tried it, but apparently some chefs really like to add it to give it some kick. Uh, people online line seem to really like it. Uh, you add about a tablespoon for each quart. And if you add some vodka to Ooh. this, now you got something going on. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but <laughs> oh. I don't know. Sometimes it's best not to know what's in yeah. stuff. Yeah, true. This could be a good segment for you, Paul, though. We have a blender, and we have a wheel with all different items on <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. And whatever comes and on, I that's what you throw guess. in the blender, and then see if you drink it, yeah. and then see yes. what you think. Yes, yeah. why go all through right. all this recipe trouble? Yeah. Let's yeah. just throw stuff in a blender. Right. I'll all work right. on that. Ooh. Stay tuned, get the wheel ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, a guy named Matt, who goes by Roman Holiday Online, makes really cool montage videos. Here's one called Title Drops. It's movie characters saying the title of the movie they're in. So that's it. What, are we some kind of... Suicide Squad. Hot tub time machine. 50-50. Angels in the outfield. From dusk to dawn. Bend it like Beckham. The rest girls are easy. Becky Sue got married. Big. Double jeopardy. Double indemnity. Bride of Frankenstein. The third man. Witness for the prosecution. The street I am desired. Ace in the hole. On the waterfront. Some like it hot. To kill a mockingbird. Somebody up there likes me. The man who shot Liberty Valance. Vertigo. Rear window. Cat on a hot tin roof. Me. And you. And everyone we know. Fantastic Mr. Fox. The right stuff. Tough guys don't dance. Point break. Vanilla Sky. Full metal jacket. Ooh. Good morning, Vietnam! The Englishman who went up a hill but came down it? a mountain. Oh, right. Clear, I love it. present danger, a bridge too far. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, Beth Cooper. I love you, Philip Morris! Please let it break! Oh, oh boy. Heart. 
fries, greens, and mayo. All right, well, there, ah, there we so go. That's nine. Fun. Galaxy. <laughs> 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 nine at nine. All right, we have rain out there this morning.